Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 439. Uh, each week we gather here to uh, uh, review the questions and answers given on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight we have uh, David Razam, David, a uh, leading internet marketer. He's based in uh, the sunny south of the UK. Um, he uh, lives um, uh, in West Sussex. Uh, you can find David at davidrazam.com. Richard Hearn is with us tonight. Um, Richard uh, is uh, based in um, Thailand. He uh, um, he describes himself as chief cook and bottle washer at, uh, um, at, chief, at Red Cardinal, .ie. And uh, Tim Kappa, uh, Tim is uh, a CEO of um, onlineownership.com. Um, he's based um, about 100 miles north of London um, in Corby. And uh, Masataki Wasa is webmaster of um, wasaweb.net. Um, he lives in Wimbledon. Oh, um, Richard wants to know why I didn't say higher echelon sites. That's because we have conducted, conducted surveys and everybody knows that now. <laughs> All right, let's, um, you know, we've got 12 questions tonight. Uh, let me see. Um, what am I doing wrong? Uh, that's right. Uh, just bear with me one second. There we go. There we go. All right, our first question uh, is, um, it's titled, um, uh, interestingly, uh, they will be separate sites, but under the same domain. Um, that's from Timo Berish Billy. Um, he, um, he or she, um as it goes on to say uh, hi everyone i have a question regarding 301 redirect i have a blog exampleblog.com and i want to merge it um, with my uh, corporate site.com so my idea is to 301 redirect all exampleblog.com content to corporate site uh, corporate site.com slash blog they will be separate sites, but under the same domain. Um, the blog has good articles and Google standings. What do you think? Um, will I lose my traffic um, if I do a redirect like, like this, or will it be okay? Appreciate your opinions. Well, I, I can say what I think. Don't do it. Don't, don't, don't even think about it. Why, 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 why do that? Yeah, it's a question. Is, uh, is Timo trying to save uh, on the, uh, the domain fee? Um, or does he think it's going to, uh, to add some more leverage to corporatesite.com? Corporate com? Um, yeah, there's always a question of what, uh, but you know, if he, if he does it, if he does a 301 direct properly, um, he should be okay. Look, I mean, a lot of, a lot of, um, aged, uh, companies out there, um, when they originally started out had uh their news blog on uh, either separate subdomain or on a completely different subdomain um i mean if you think you're going to get like some kind of massive go out of it 
Uh, yeah, look, I mean, I guess it's a question of what you're doing it for. Um, could you not, like, yeah, it depends how it's, uh, how it's, how it's, um, how it looks. I mean, <clears throat> um, could you bring in the header from your main site into your um, blog site so that a user can navigate between the two? That is another um, uh, sort of option for you to do instead of switching all the whole thing, 301 redirects. I mean, like, we don't know what the size of this is. Okay. Um, we don't know what kind of a ball lake it's going to be. But another thing is if you feel that this is more about a branding thing, um, the user um, not being able to navigate easily in between the two, could you bring in the same header uh, from corporate and footer, um, which would then allow the user to easily navigate to the other site um i mean the, yeah it it all depends what you're kind of thinking um but if you are if you do want to merge it you know um try and keep the the same structure uh, obviously of, of all the urls and then essentially you're just redirecting on that domain you're not having to piss about with like massively crazy redirects if all your urls are the same because I'm assuming you've also interlinked between all of these things over the years, um, things like that. It, it could it could get quite messy. Yeah. yeah. So hard to, to attract the backlinks. Um, why um, why why um, let, let them break? Anyway. I'm going to jump in and just give you a couple of things here, like just things that come to mind, a little bit different from the others. But the first thing is they will be separate sites, but under the same domain. If they're on the same second level domain and the same subdomain, dub, 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 we'll just say, then they are technically going to be the same site and not separate sites at all. So that's the first thing to say. That by merging them, you will actually have these two sections of the same site. But the second thing that comes to my mind is reading his question, he says, I want to redirect all. So he says, I have a blog, examplebog.com, and want to merge with my corporate site. So I'm going to assume that the blog and the corporate site are actually on the same topic or have something around the same topicality that perhaps in his blog, he's talking about how he runs his business or something related to the business. Um, I'm going to say that all things been equal, if he can do the migration properly, properly. I'm going to guess that he'll actually do better by having the blog under corporatesite.com. If the, if the blog has got some decent backlinks, uh, I think all in all, merging them onto a single domain could be a good move. Could be a bad move if he, if he handles it wrong. But like, I know so many companies that what they did in the beginning, you know, they use a third party for their blog and they have like blog.corporatesite.com. And you see lots and lots of companies do it, like they do it with their, with their knowledge base or whatever. They use third party systems for these things. But in the end, they generally, very many of them end up having to merge that in into their main site. And they do it for SEO purposes. Um, and my experience with it has been that it, it has resulted in good outcomes if the migration is handled properly and the traffic to the combined site has grown at a better rate than the two separate sites. So it's very hard to say whether it's a good idea or not. Um, it really depends on whether he gets traffic to the blog, whether he's got good links, whether he can handle the migration risk. And if, if, all of those are true or good, then yeah, he could try and do this. Um, but just take care. Okay. 
All right, let's move on to uh, the next on our run list, number two. Um, from Ashley Fox, um, it's the first question that uh, Ashley sent us. Uh, can someone tell me how I do a backlink? Um, Ashley goes on to say, oh, hi, I'm not technical at all, uh, but just starting a business. So try to do the most I can for myself. Um, please can someone tell me how I do a backlink? I've Googled for answers and nothing makes sense to me. So a link to your site is where somebody finds something on your own website, which they are referencing to your site. So they will put a link from their site onto your site. So pointing from theirs to yours. So it will say, check out, um, you know, go and look at, at Ashley Fox, um, Fox's website, and then they will put a link from Ashley Fox to ashleyfox.com. That's basically a link. How I do a backlink is essentially, <laughs> if you are going to, you know, if you, you know, you could technically create these by setting up um, Ashley Fox on Facebook, and then your about section, ashleyfox.com. That is a link to your site. That's bear, you know, it's, um, you could have something on your site. Um, top 10 tips from Ashley Fox for 2022. And readers, users, I don't know what you do. Um, are like wow that's brilliant you know and they share it socially those are links back to it uh someone does a news article go and check out ashley fox's links to 2022 to that that is a link coming back to your site and that's naturally attracting links um and yeah you could approach other sites and say, hey, look, um, I'm, you know, I, I don't know if you've seen my work or blah, 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 blah. I'd love to contribute to your, your site. And they say, go for it, you know, and normally you can get a link coming back from that. So that's essentially links. Thank you, Tim. Uh, anything to add to this one? Okay, let's move on to number two on our, number three, I should say, on our run list. This one from Melissa Harve. Um, Melissa, this one is titled, We are now two weeks in and nothing has been done. Um, she goes on to say, uh, I'm still learning search engine optimization, so... We hired uh, an SEO guy to do the SEO for our family business. We paid for 1K for the first month, then 1K each month thereafter, um, which was to add landing pages, um, run Google Ads, and tweak the SEO, etc. We are now two weeks in and nothing has been done. Is this normal? I assume that the person um, would have done everything in the first week. Um, at this rate, and they might be leaving it um, to the last week, which I feel um, isn't right. As that's three weeks, three weeks worth of potential traffic that we are missing out on, if that makes sense. Um, kind of like if you hired an Airbnb for a month, uh, and they only let you stay for the last week. Um, what are your thoughts? Well, look, the thing is, how big is the site? Now, I know you've said it's a local business, so we'll get back to that. But, you know, on a local, on, on, on a massive site, 
ordinarily a lot of stuff would have been done you know and decided up ahead um <clears throat> on 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 like what's going to be done they would have provided you with some form of idea you know uh, was there a contract what was that you do? like you know there's so many different things um paying someone a grand and you having to ask how long before i start seeing them do anything is a very very big problem um now if this and you've already said this is a local site so just to give i mean we don't know what they do but uh, or what was agreed upon but if this is a local site um you know the first kind of thing if it was for me for example you would have at least within the first two weeks you would have seen your at least your gmb being optimized and uh working with your your site and you would have seen you because you said ads you would have seen uh your local ads being connected and starting to run because you would be paying for those right so there would have been the conversation you know what you know you need to register for your account you need to get this done you need to put your, your billing details in you would have had that at least you would have seen something happening there if you had actually seen something happening on site i know you said landing pages but like i, I don't know what what kind i mean if you had agreed for different landing pages could it possibly be that they're getting the copy written like you can't just magically um you know yes you could create the url but you don't want an empty page sitting there with lorem ipsum all over it so in that instance he, they could be having the copy done for that um i don't know you know could it have been 10 10 new landing pages that you agreed upon um and he's got you know and and, and these and the copies being written at the same time like you, you need to ask these you really need to be asking them these questions um yeah just just jump in here like if you think about it okay this person is paying a thousand whatever dollars per month and they're paying for landing pages google ads tweak the seo and whatever etc is okay that's quite a lot so what if they're expecting everything to be done in the first two weeks well what are they going to pay the thousand for in month two and month three and month four like surely they should have been told well we'll do two landing pages a month and we'll in the first month we'll set up your adwords account or whatever that might be but this this is just yeah i mean it's just communications just aren't there obviously they're not setting expectations the, the provider doesn't know how to set the expectations with the, the client. The client doesn't know what to expect and is probably a little bit clueless. Like, a, I mean, a thousand dollars a month, how much would a thousand dollars a month get for local SEO from you, Tim? Like I would say, like, you're not going to be doing their AdWords account and their landing pages, et cetera, for a, for a thousand dollars no, a month. No, I mean, a, a, a grand, a grand on local is going to be, you, you know, we're going to we're going to a grand on local seo in a month we're going to attempt to get a, sh a, a lot done mm -hmm. um you know that's going to include citations your gmb i don't piss about with with local ads but yeah we can easily turn those on because local ads is literally turn on they, they mm -hmm. there's no negative keywords there's no you know what i mean there's you don't need to piss about any of that it's literally just turn the fucker on um and yeah and do you know what's the most worrying thing here is okay that they're gonna add landing pages they'll have to speak to the client like who's gonna sign off whatever content gets written yeah, up for these yeah. landing pages like there's definitely something very missing here in terms of yeah. some sort of schedule uh, and uh, you know around when are things been done and how are things going to be signed off and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. There's I, a lot missing. There is an awful lot missing. I really, really hope that these people haven't paid certain offshore companies that, you know, really don't know what they're doing, but that's very possible for a grand a month. You know I mean? A grand a month is, 
it's peanuts. Like it really, I, I, it probably isn't peanuts to this small business. I, I don't mean it that way, but like in the grander scheme of things, um, I wonder how much would a staff member at this particular business do for a thousand dollars a month? And then you try and transpose that to digital marketing and you figure out, oh, what, what should I be getting for a thousand dollars a month? Yeah. Um, you should be getting something, but maybe not a whole lot. Yeah. I mean, I know like some top tier local, local SEO <laughs> companies in the States are literally looking at on consultation, roughly $400 an hour. Hour. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. that's, that, that, that's probably, there's probably a lot more in certain, in certain areas, like when they get onto the enterprise level, like where like, well into four figures an hour, no problem. So, I mean, it's all relative, but how long should they wait? They should wait and see. I, I would still maybe give them the benefit of the doubt and say, well, like how many clients are they working for? They're probably working for a lot. They're not going to just do everything via in the first two weeks. They should be communicating with you. They should give you some idea of when to expect X, Y, and Z. Um, but at the same time, uh, it's not realistic to be going after them two weeks in to say, where's all my stuff? Uh, you're on a monthly schedule, so you'll probably have to wait till the end of the month to see what's happening. But they should communicate and set expectations around that. Uh, and if you don't see anything after a month, I certainly wouldn't be paying anything for a month too. Yeah, the, the other the thing is that they've got to be careful uh, um, because they're, they're giving um, this third party um, access access to their site and they don't want to get into a fight yeah. um, with somebody who might feel genuinely aggrieved yeah yeah no no that's that's a very good point uh that they need to be very careful about what access rights they give over and what people are doing and if they don't understand this stuff mm, uh, be very careful but i mean like this this comment like kind of like if you hired an airbnb for a month and they only let you stay the last week no you're paying a thousand dollars for knowledge for the knowledge that these guys have assuming they're professional you're not paying for a month of their time and you need to realize that you're not paying a thousand dollars for a month of someone's time. You're paying a thousand dollars for hours of their time, which they may provide over the over a month. So it, it does sound to me like there, there's real problems with expectations on both sides here, probably. Yeah. OK, we covered this one. Let's move on to yeah, like yeah i mean it's funny i had a i did i did um just some consultation for a local uh letting agent about eight years ago knitting agent is it letting agents oh sorry i thought you said knitting i thought yeah okay letting agents right now I got it. I got an email. I thought he said betting agents. Didn't letting didn't fuck sakes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I got an email yesterday going, "Hey, you know, I haven't. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, good to catch up. Hope you're doing well. Uh, you used to um, um, at X Y Z rate. Um, can we can we resume that? And I'm like, this was eight years ago. <laughs> No, we can't resume on that rate. Are you off your? Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it's it's people kind of just think, sort of this is some kind of static work all the time for this. I think, yeah, it's it's yeah. You got to put your rate up, Tim, so that you can um, take a, a trip to Australia on your way back from South Africa. Oh, mate, I'm gonna have to, Jim. Don't worry, it's coming. Um, the daughter and boyfriend, I think they're aiming to get back there to the <coughs> Gold Coast in the next yeah. three to four years, mate. So, yeah, I'm going to become a regular eventually. Will you be able to sleep with Richard? Got the spare room what? there. <laughs> All right, move on. And 
next, uh, next on our run list, uh, it's from Robbie King. It's titled, Should I Avoid Making Any Local SEO Efforts? Um, he goes on to say, if my goal is to rank for markets in multiple continents, for example, should I skip filling out the Google My Business? Uh, so if you're building a brand and you've got head offices in each of those countries, it makes sense for your brand, obviously, and it's a quick win. So when somebody starts searching your brand, they get the knowledge panel coming down the side where your head office is, uh, possibly a link direct through to the, the, the you know, that, 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 um, to that, uh, tele for local telephone numbers for contact, for inquiries, whatever. When I replied that we already established that no, you're just basically online. So yeah, there's no point. I wonder would it would it help at all though with like them recognizing you as an entity? Like you know they got all these different data points and like we don't quite know what happens in their black box. I mean it probably won't hurt them at least to do it for his home market. Yeah, I think that just purely online. So this is the thing, you know, it's then if they did actually have mm. offices, it would make sense to and it would be a quick win. Um, but I think these guys are just purely online. There is, you know, that's it. Is it really only for like retail or for like walking like is is that your sort of is that no they could like, well the thing is is they you know if if these guys technically aren't in those areas uh, then how like then it's going to be a bit messy if they then find a service area let's say i don't know where they are let's say these guys are in the states and then they yeah then they're going to do a service a service business in a service offices in london mm. and forking out 500 quid just to get that postcard oh yeah no i don't think that i'm just curious whether whether like it's it, it just it sort of interests me from the point of view that I, i've often wondered in their sort of black box of of their knowledge graph like what data points they use to try and sort of distinguish entities you know and whether mm. this could be one of the data points they use for that and whether that i mean even at the fringes whether we don't know and there's no way we could ever test it to figure out if it has any benefit but it probably can't hurt them though at least to set it up in their home market would you think or like is it a problem with setting up google my no, business if you are no it's not company? a problem i mean they would be violating the guidelines but you know if you do it properly um and of course uh re remember if somebody's uh querying that you could actually get a nice brand pack like yeah you know if somebody's in the uk you could actually get a nice thing with nested actual hey okay you're in the us but here's here's the uk here's the here's the french and and and, and here's the um you know european offices um it, it 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 can it's like anything online it's it's how you appear but they won't be breaking any guidelines if they set it up for their own home locale based on their actual location sure they no 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 that's fine because they would set it as a service area business yeah no i i wouldn't suggest they go out and set up like serviced offices in different countries i mean that's uh, the the you know the the, the overhead of doing that and the cost of doing that they're, they're probably never going to get that back unless they're big enough that they're on the cusp of actually having offices in those countries they're probably never going to reap that that they're not going to reap any benefit from that sort of investment i don't think yeah just one 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 little thing um they could investigate and that that would be to like with if their goal is to rank for markets uh, in multiple continents, uh, so that they host their, their website uh, on um, that continent, um, that, that that should give, should give them uh, uh, traffic to to their website. Anyway, 
Let's move on to number five on our run list, which is uh, from Sharon Kinney. Um, it's titled, Would You Use a Main Keyword in Your Catchphrase Slash Motto? Sharon goes on to say, um, the first question here. I thought up a dumb question for fun, and now I have to know. Uh, would you use a main keyword in your catchphrase motto? Um, it's written at the bottom of random pages, randomly placed uh, in content, every email, social media posts. Uh, is this a good idea or not? So it's like... <laughs> It's not really an SEO question, you know, this is more about your brand. Does it suit your brand? Will it work for the brand? Is it a good fit for the brand? Um, whether your tagline is in a nice little thing in the bottom of your website is not really going to make a difference. But if you become known for that, it's whether it's a good fit. I don't really think this is kind of like a. They're, they're probably doing this though. They're probably thinking like keyword equals SEO equals if I add more keywords in, will I get more traffic? Will I rank more highly? Or, and you know, it's we're putting it in all these different places. Would it be a good idea? And it's probably the tail wagging the dog. And um, I mean, it, it, it reminds me of of the local septic tank cleaner near where my sister lives, whose motto is "Your shite is our bread and butter," and they have that on their all their vans and trucks. <laughs> and not that this was any reference here, but it's uh, yeah, I, I think that this is uh, probably a, a lost cause. I don't think they're going to get any value out of this. Okay. Let's go to number six on our run list. We're halfway there. Um, Rudolf Ladizdensky uh, asked a question. It's uh, titled uh, Hi All, leaving advice here. Um, I have a customer who is running a fashion business and they only want to show the latest collection of products. Uh, this means every year they want to change all products. This creates an SEO problem. I can redirect the old category to a new one, collection 2021 to collection 2022, but what is the best way to deal with products? Redirect them individually to a new collection, about 50 or so, set them out of stock and hidden from catalog uh, and leave them uh, as is. Uh, any other ideas? Who calls their categories collection 2021, 2022? Surely their categories should be like men's trousers or men's shirts or ladies' dresses or... Well, and then it doesn't you matter see, if your products change. Yeah, but it's because of, the, you know, it's these poncy designers. They all like to think they're up their ass and... Uh, yeah, um, friends and influencing people <laughs> yeah totally um well i don't think there is a you know because i don't think there is a way because because five years down the line and that you, you've literally i mean just call it you've got a hundred products a season there's four seasons Oh, are they only just doing years? Okay, well they're not so uh, they're not so swanky these these designers. You normally do four seasons in a year, but anyway. <laughs> um, but if you're doing a hundred, and then you know after five years, can you imagine the amount of redirects that you're trying to deal with? It's absolutely ridiculous. But what are you going to um, write for? Like that's the other thing. Like if they're just doing the products, like it's your yeah, it's, pages that you're gonna try and rank, not really not necessarily the product pages. So 
they need to figure out an you know an ontology or taxonomy for their website that works for fashion. How about how about something like how about something like having the having it like collection uh 2022 or 20 like forward slash collection 20 21 22 and then your products follow on from that for each year and then you can then at least you've got a page that is still in a lookbook archive that is still <sighs> no that goes away as well you don't want to change your URLs all the time. You don't want to have years in them. Unless you no, want to no, have no, no, no. What I mean, years. So what I mean is they're changing every year, like literally completely every year. Mm -hmm. So you've got like, you, so your collections got, so just, it would be 2022. But so at the end of the year, right, when all of those 2022 products are leaving, you would just redirect it to that, 2020 the hype the the forward slash 2022 2022 would be a landing page for this was our collection hey you know what that could be a plan it could be this was our collection 2022 it's still live it's still there and everything still stays on obviously you can't click through to that product and purchase it anymore but people can view last year's collection obviously they can't purchase it and this year's in the navigation is the forward slash 2023 where all of the the that year's products earls come off run off like i mean we don't know how many they're having but uh, at least it's going to be changing all the time you know it's it's yeah it's, but at least you've it, got like, that what is 2021 going to rank for what what are those pages going to rank for if it's built that way if you think about it like from Google's perspective, they're going to see collection page. They're not interested in that. People aren't searching for a collection. Yeah, yeah. They're looking for a category. Like they're looking for men's shirts or men's t-shirts yeah. or, you know, whatever it is. So we don't know what the fashion is, but surely they can break down the collection into into. I'm I'm guessing ninety percent. I'm guessing ninety percent of their stuff is direct designer uh, search queries. It's not. Uh, ladies dress or it will be um, uh, yeah but still people are looking for the current collection right they yeah it'll be the archive yeah. version they won't you know you as a shop want to sell the clothes that you're selling not sort of you know direct the visitors to past um you know photographs of um what they offered so uh, it just doesn't make sense to me to do these all redirects you know, when people land on these site, it should be the current collection that people can actually buy. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you want to set up an archive version, saying you know these were the fashion of before, so people you know who are interested in fashion history or you know the past trends might want to have a look at it. But that's not really going to bring in the revenue if you are a fashion brand. You know, you want to sell the current version, and that you know what you're selling will change but the url should remain the same because yeah, if people yeah. Look at, you know, i reckon a that's where you want people yeah to i reckon have a random url which is kind of figure it out in terms of your i don't know your stock or something so it's not going to be a, it's not going to be a, 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 a it'll be a, a, a digit uh, a, almost like you know it'll be a one two three four url which will stay constant. You will literally then just update your product and that description for that URL. That you are like, if it's a dress, it, that will remain a similar long dress. If it's a, a men's jacket, you, uh. I don't know. I can't agree with this stuff. Like, I mean, imagine going to Zara.com or or HM.com. Yeah, but what would and, you like? To, like, what? Like, what? You categorize your products like the, if you look at your collection from over the last five years, there's probably you can probably categorize them some way, whether it's by brand or by mm. clothing type or whatever the taxonomy is that, that runs each through each collection. 
And then at the end of the year, you remove the products that you're not selling anymore and you replace them with the new products, but it's the category pages that you try to rank. And yeah. when I say category, the, the category could be Gucci or it could be who, whatever brand of clothes. I don't know. But there must be some taxonomy that can be built, yeah. or, built yeah. around what your collections of fashion, which could be anything, what they break yeah. down as. Yeah, yeah. It could be by designer. It could be by the brand. You know, it could, it could be do them all. Product range. Yeah. So you know, it could be Tim Kappa's freely dressed collection. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Pink fluffy freaking elephants. But you're not going to do it. But, and you, you could have a thing where you can see the collection, but what would be the point in that when your website only has the clothing from the current year's collection? That makes It just makes no sense to be thinking yeah. of things in terms of yeah, the collection. It, it should, yeah, it should still be, even if it's Ponzi fashion, it should still be skirt or uh, top or, you, you know what I mean, whatever the bloody names are for them. Um, even if even if you didn't do it by skirt or, or top, it could could be by material. Yeah, yeah. I think I think there needs to be a rethink on this mm. one, and and definitely don't say out of stock because that's not going to come back online, right? You know, if it's past year's fashion and that's no longer produced, it's not going to come back online. So don't say it's out of stock because it's never going to yeah. be in stock yeah, again. Yeah, it's never going to come back. But you just want to keep category pages. You want want to keep those earls from one collection to another and try and rank those, whether that's the category or the brand or whatever those different taxonomies are. Like you don't want to change them every collection. You just want to keep the ones that are current that still actually have products in them. If something doesn't have products in it, okay, you don't need to keep it. But you don't want to be changing earls every year. That's that's not for SEO anyway. You do not want to be changing your URLs every year, and you don't want to be setting up redirects because Google isn't necessarily going to say, "Oh, we're, let's let's pass all these signals across." Um, that's I think that's a recipe for for a lot of pain. And a, a properly set up website will probably work better for users as well. Whereby go and look at some of the big fashion retailers like Zara, H and M, etc. They're not showing last year's products either they only show products they're selling today so it's no different but they have they are going to build their sites for users to be able to find what they're looking for and it's it's generally going to be the category pages they're going to rank okay Closing up number six, if there's no objections. Um, Braden Norwood um, asked the question, it's titled, should I consider disavowing these links? Uh, all right, this might be incredibly stupid, but any insight I could get would be appreciated. I started a site back in June of 2021 and quickly started putting out content. Around September, several of our pages started ranking for various keywords and the traction seemed to be about yeah, what I was hoping for with a decent climb in ranking phase. Uh, however, at the beginning of January, I noticed a sharp decline and now a month and a half later, we've lost around half of what we've gained in keywords from September to January. I also noticed at the time that we gained two secondary backlinks from an unsecured low authority site. I started looking into whether it's appropriate to visit disavow links from unsecured sites and whether that could have contributed to the rapid and sudden decline in progress that otherwise was going strong. However, it seems that every professional out there has a different view. Some say to disavow liberally, while others note it should only be used in in cases of uh, manual penalty through Google Search Console. And since we hadn't received any penalties, I'm, I was hoping for some advice on whether or not I should consider disavowing these links and whether they can could actually be contributing uh, to the decline. Uh, thanks for any insight. Do you think that they ever hook up that tool, Jim? I beg your pardon, Richard? Do you think they ever actually hooked up the tool, the disavow tool? I don't think they ever did. 
<laughs> I've never disavowed a link in my life. No, that's right. Believe it or not, I've never done it. I've never used the tool. No, no, I think that was Google's big lie. Who knows? No, I, I think too much is being um, too much is is being attached to these. Was it two two links? Whatever. Yes, you know. I mean, they're really not going to be hurt. Um, yes, two secondary backlinks. I knew I saw it somewhere. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's no way two backlinks are going to make. I, I, I just can't see it, you know? No, no. SEO is much too complex a beast with too many variables for that one thing and you know a very small number of that one thing to to do anything um the amount that your that uh, your site performance is going up and down might just be down to seasonality to um to changes in the google algorithm to these things happen um there's too often there's a feeling that that the seo is is something you you build up and you build up and you build up and you build up and it's a straight line going up goodness of one sort or another um traffic or keywords or rankings or um or whatever you know you choose your kpi um but it's down to so much more than what you do uh, there's a whole internet out there um and there's google putting strings as well um so on the answer of the links i wouldn't bother disavowing them because i don't think they're they're the calls of what you're seeing if they know some of the keywords that they have noticed this decline in if they can do they can they can go and look and see well where they've declined somebody else has filled a gap and just look at who's filled the gap and see i mean also see if if their pages even were on were were related to the the, the query intent for instance but see who has replaced them and see like are these better pages are the pages structurally different? Do they carry different sort of content? I mean, there's so much that can go on. Um, and also there's so little detail in here. Like we don't know like what niche they're in. We don't know like could it have been a core update? I mean, there was a spam update in the middle of December. There was a core update, I think at the beginning of December. Like there's all these updates going on all over the place and this just might be natural churn and nothing to do with these links at all. So you really have to go and start looking at, at what's what's replaced you because for every side that goes down, there's another one that goes up. So yeah, but uh, links, they're far less important these days, you know, with all the progress with natural language processing, it's like links are still valuable, but nowhere near as valuable as they were in an olden age where you know, everything was about links, like click here, rank to, you know, blank page rank for click here. I mean, that's not going to happen anymore with, with the way they can process language. So it's very difficult to say, but I think that links, uh -uh, that's not the place to look. Go and see, can you improve the content that used to rank and does it change in rank? Can you augment it with more content? Can you refresh the content? Can you write new content? Will it rank? See what happens. Yep. All right, let's roll on to number uh, eight on our run list. This one from Robbie King. Um, Robbie King said, can I only use robots text? Robbie goes on to say, this is a potentially very dumb SEO question. 
Uh, no index plus no follow versus robots text. Both seem to achieve the same thing. No. Um, why would I use a combination of no index plus no follow when I can just use robots text? Um, we're indebted to George G um, for saying not true. Robots uh, just blocks crawling on your own site. If an outside link uh, points to the page, uh, it can get indexed. On the contrary, no index will always keep the page off the index. You know, one is a, is a crawl directive and the other is an indexing directive. There are instructions to two different parts of, of Google's pipeline. And I'd also say, don't ever use no follow on internal links. Daft. You know, in fact, it could even cause a penalty, and, um, or it could, at the very least, make uh, Googlebot think that your uh, page uh, rank sculpted. Yeah, I, I, I never worry about that. They they just sync the page rank across no follow. You, you've mm. got you got ten links in your page, and five of them are no follow. Well, half of the page rank from that 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 page gets just sunk. Yeah, they, they just destroy it. And it's just <laughs> gone, it vanishes. It makes no sense to use no follow internally. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if there are no objections, I'm moving on to number nine. All right, Robbie King, again, what kind of content uh, should I write? Um, he said, should I write content keeping link building opportunities and what other sites might want um, front of mind? Or should I just focus on writing the uh, content that ticks the keyword boxes and is better than what's already on page one? Uh, and then worry about which site uh, would want to link to my content later. I'm guessing that in most cases, good um, content um, will tick both boxes. Uh, but wanted to ask, just in case um, I need to consider... Uh, sorry about that. Um, just in case I need to consider link building opportunities from the start. Um, write content for your for your readers, your customers, your viewers, or whatever you want to call them. Um, don't write content for uh, link building. Um, although, you know, I suppose you might be able to, to argue that if you write uh, really, really, really good content, um, then uh, that is for link building because people will naturally link to it. Uh, but I don't think that's how you mean it. Um, so um, I would say neither. I think you you should be uh, writing for your uh, writing for your uh, your readers, your customers, your buyers, your whatever. Um, primarily, um, you can then think about structuring. It, you can think about um, schema and so on and so forth, um, but don't uh, don't think of it in don't think of content in terms of some kind of mechanistic idea of building links. I would recommend. I don't know what the rest of you think, but uh, that's the way I would go about it. Yeah, I've never, I've, I've never thought of um, um, creating any content in terms of will this get links. My, my thought process for um, is always like you know whether it be with clients or my own site's slightly different. It's more like what's going on, and you know, but in a sense, it's still this. It's still the same. But the thought process is, what is the user searching for when they are conducting their research around whatever that site is, right? So, um, and that content 
is being created to intersect that portion of the user that's going to search or query that during their research phase. You know, I, I often, uh, I mean, there, there are some exceptions, but I, I, I often explain this to the, to, to the, explain it this way to clients is, uh, depending what they're in, no user wakes up in the morning. So for example, let's say a chiropractor, right? Like, first off, I don't know what the, well, I do now, but I don't know what the difference is between a chiropractor and a freaking osteopath in that sense. And if I wake up in the morning and I've got a twinge in my back that goes through to the next day, I don't then start, I don't immediately start searching for chiropractic treatment. I start going pain, lower back, what have I done? Um, uh, how to fix you know, how, how to, you know, any exercises I can do, any, and you, you need, you know, it might take that user loads of different queries, loads of different information before they actually even realize that, oh, you know, the chiropractor could actually uh, do something on the back or actually it may be better for an osteopath, right? There's a, you know, you, so you need to start looking at creating content that intersects what your what your customer or user is going to be searching to ultimately end up coming to you. No user wakes up and types the exact freaking thing. I mean, literally, yes. If you've got water coming through your ceiling, yes. Emergency plumber, emergency electrician, but hundreds of things like literally everything else in that sense or unless you specifically know what it is, are never going to actually directly search for that query. You've probably done it yourself. You know, you're thinking you might want to go on holiday in this kind of region, but you do 50 different queries in between finding that place you want to stay because you don't know exactly. So you do it all the time online and so do your users. So if you're going to be looking at content, forget about attracting links. Write content that you're going to get in front of your users, which are going to constantly see your brand and your name, providing information about that thing all the way through, ultimately through to the purchasing journey for them to go, shit, you know what? I've seen these guys 10 times in different search queries. Um, I'm already building a brand affinity with them. Um, let me actually get a quote from them or let me approach them or whatever the case may be. And that's what you should be doing in, in, in essence. I would have thought if, if your back was a problem, just make sure that you um, don't wake up um, uh, on cold uh, mornings uh, in an outdoor spa bar. Anyway, let's go to <laughs> number 10. Shika Shukla asks, where would, should we, where should we write brand name uh, in each title tag? Uh, and uh, this was answered um, by George G, who said at the end, Sound fair enough? Yeah. Um, obviously, it depends <laughs> um, on the circumstances too. But um, the, the title shown in search results are limited. Uh, there, there is a limit to a number of characters that can be shown. And Google does rewrite them still, don't they? So, my preference personally is to put it at the end because um, unless, mm, unless the brand itself is the really big um, component of searcher's intent, Yeah, I, I put it at the end because um, all the pages, uh, the, the, the brand 
um, um, is relevant to all the pages on the website. It doesn't tell me or the reader anything new. So the first thing you see should tell you something about the the, the page um, or the content of the page um, would be my argument. And that's why I do it that way around. Okay. Number 11 on our run list, any Dev Tian. Uh, its title does changing menu names harm uh, uh, search engine optimization. Um, Ali says, uh, hello, if the menu names of the main service are changing, uh, they have been for almost four to five years, or they have had those names for almost four to five years, um, will there be any keyword decrease? Do header menu names, uh, cha name changes, uh, harm uh, uh, SEO? We're indebted to Michael Martinez uh, for his comments. Sometimes he said there's no quick, simple way to project uh, uh, what will happen because every site is different. Yeah, I suppose the answer is not necessarily but it depends what this involves, doesn't it? Because if it involves whole reorganization of the content and how the site is structured, for, for instance, and if it involves redirects, then that could be a somewhat risky proposition. Yes. All right. If nobody objects, I'm going to go to number 12 on our run list. Okay. It's from Oliver Harrison. It's titled, Is it possible to rank a website using no follow backlinks um, from uh, the social media platforms? Um, Oliver said, hey, SEOs, is it possible to rank a website that using no follow backlinks from sites such as Pinterest, Tumblr, LinkedIn, Facebook, etc.? Uh, given that the competition is very low. Uh, if the competition is very low, you don't even need links. Thank you, Tim. Any, anybody else? I, I can't see how it would. I mean, it would help with discovery, perhaps, and it, it may, you know, drive traffic. Yeah, I mean, the way he's phrased that, I don't think they're actually going to use those social media platforms to actually generate anything. They literally just create a freaking profile. Um, no, I, really, I really don't see it, to be honest. I mean, no, isn't it? I mean, like the, the question, the answer is no. You can rank the website, but it's not from these now follow backlinks. Yeah. In my opinion, anyway, you can uh, keep adding those no follow backlinks to the cows come home. That's not just ranking your content. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it's it's useful. I mean, it, it, it's useful to have a uh, link from the New York Times, but um, it, it, it's not going to affect your ranking. It'll bring, bring you traffic. But this is the interesting question where, like, there's a lot of views here. And there's a lot of views here, even from people who, who know their stuff. But I wouldn't necessarily say that there's consensus in terms of the... Everyone's got an opinion on this, but I, I, I'm, personally, I think that, yeah, any of these sort of links from these, whatever, the, whether they're profile links or whatever they might be, like, if they're no follow, 
they just don't go into a graph like it's they might use them for discovery but they're not going to use them for ranking i don't even know if they'll use them for discovery to be dead honest yeah yeah my, my view whether it is right or not is always how easy is is it for me to to build these things if it's easy for me to build these things i believe that google won't give them very much <clears throat> won't, won't give us give them very much value um or even any value so you know i i can i i, I can build as many as i like from pinterest tumblr linkedin facebook etc um so i don't think they would would help at all I mean, like, like, look at this comment. Like, this guy is saying, "Well, I got these links from Quora. I got these links from from e-commerce sites or wherever, and they're all no follow." And I don't think it was anything to do with the e-commerce sites. That's it. like he's got this idea that this that no follow sites from some sites have more value than no follow sites from other sites. And you know, you're just getting into people just jumping to conclusions. I'm I'm not doubting what he saw. But I am very much doubting that it's reproduce like that he can reproduce that by getting some more Quora links and just see does this happen again? I mean, you know, it, it, it doesn't really make sense what people are saying when they think it through. It, it's 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 very easy to see something and and conclude that it's as a result of X, but actually it's as a result of Y, but you just don't see it. So. You know, it's 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 you got to be careful. Um, just because someone says I did X and I saw Y, there could be correlation between those two things, but it doesn't mean that X caused Y. So, you know, just just I think you got to be really careful when people say, "Yeah, I, it, it happened to me, and this is what I saw." God knows he could have got a link from some other site, just one link from an on-topic good site that he doesn't know about and that's what actually caused his content to rank better i mean he doesn't know what google what links google knows about so yeah it's it this is a real tricky area because it's so hard to prove something or otherwise and this is where things become more artistic than they do scientific so just beware um, I wouldn't work too hard in getting those Quora links and those no follow links from e-commerce directories if you expect suddenly that your your Craton site is going to jump up in the rankings. Um, yeah, it's a different world. Yep. Yeah, it's, a, it's another one of these silver bullet ideas, isn't it? Which. Uh... You know, if if you, you know, if you do whatever it is on the, on the internet, great riches will, uh, will result. Um, and as we all know, there isn't a silver bullet. Um, it's not that simple. It's not one thing. We all have to juggle lots of things to to get to get success or whatever, however we want to put it. And, and there are probably far cleverer people than, than us mere mortals who have, you know, who work on this stuff and who have tried to spam the hell out of no follow links and every sort of platform known to man to rank their their semi legal drug website. Um, you know, I mean, if that works, does this guy honestly not think that every Viagra website on the web would be would not be trying to get their no follow links on Quora or wherever it is. I mean, you know, think it through, and you know, if it if it sounds too good to be true, eh, you know, maybe. Yeah, fair enough. There was another mad theory there that someone was saying it was it was. Uh, if people click on your links from other websites, Google knows that your info is important for others too. And, and like I just wrote, <laughs> I just wrote the answer. How does Google know about all these clicks, please? Like, do you think that they they have insight into every website on the web? Like, 
do does do people honestly think that every website is feeding Google data? Like people just need to think a bit more more thoroughly on some of the theories they come up with, and sometimes then they'll see that yeah, maybe this theory doesn't hold as much water as I, I thought it did. Yeah. Okay, well, we move on from this one, number 12. Today. And that time again. We've done it again. We've answered all of the questions asked uh, on the Dan Messier Questions Facebook group. Um, we'll be back at the same time next week to, to do this all again. But uh, before we go, I must thank... Uh, People like Stockbridge Trustlow, uh, Christine Hansen, Michael Martinez, uh, people who uh, uh, answer questions as soon as they appear on, on the WCA Questions Facebook group and make our group such a, a valuable resource. Um, and you guys, I, I, I have to thank you guys turning up week after week. Uh, um, and uh, it, it's just... Um, um the sense they've just appreciated so much all right um if i can find the right button i'll uh, i'll stop us from doing this um uh, i don't know how unbelievable stop recording that's it